Today I'm flying business class for the first time ever in my life with American Airlines and I'm going to be doing a little review going over not only the pricing but the experience from the pros and the cons. I am extremely excited and today is a little different. Normally when I fly with American because I do a lot I usually check in in the main check-in area. However it's a little bit different as I'm checking in priority. There doesn't appear to be a long line at all over at the priority check-in so I'm going to go ahead and get my bags checked in and then once I do we'll go over all of the interesting details about my upcoming international flight. My bags have officially been checked in, so here is the rundown. I have an eight hour and 50 minute flight out of Miami, Florida, over to Paris International Airport, specifically Charles de Gaulle or CDG. I will be flying on a Boeing 77-200ER. The ER just stands for extended range. It gets about 2,500 more nautical miles than the standard range. The initial cost of my flight ended up being around $800, which is more than I typically would pay going over to Europe. Normally, I fly with a budget airline known as French B where I could pay anywhere between $200 to $500 each way. However, flying with American, they would offer me a deal that for a couple hundred more dollars, I can either fly premium or business class. So I took the deal. This came with a bigger seat with more leg space, two checked bags, complimentary drinks on board, and apparently according to the woman I checked in with, lounge access. The damage isn't too bad considering that it is holiday or Christmas season, about $1,100. However, that's considered less than what I would have paid if I bought premium or business class outright where you'd be talking about paying in the thousands of dollars. Now to get through the almighty TSA security. I'll see you guys on the other side. I've officially survived TSA and unfortunately even if I am flying business class I did still have to take off my shoes. I really need to look into global entry and TSA pre. I fly so much I don't know why I haven't done it already. Now let's see if we can get into this flagship lounge. I don't see any signs for the flagship lounge however I do see the Admirals Club and I'm not sure but I think it's somewhat of the same thing. I think the only difference between the flagship and the Admiral is that the flagship is supposed to be the nicer one. I think everything is complimentary whereas for the Admiral, I think you have to pay extra for some things. By the way, as we're walking, I am a little curious and slightly worried as to what this experience is going to be like. In American Airlines 97 years of history, they are one of the largest airlines in the world, the largest technically in the United States, and if you look at their reviews online, they are somewhat spotty, so I guess we'll see what happens. Okay, I have great news. I just left the Admirals Club and they told me that I'm not welcome there. No, I'm joking. They said I should go to the flagship lounge over at D30. I could stay there if I want to. However, they said the flagship lounge is a lot nicer. I'm here at D15. I need to go all the way up here to D30. I've successfully made it to the flagship lounge. Now, I'm gonna do a voiceover for here on out for this little snippet. That way I can try to look like I belong and of course not bother anybody else. When I arrived to the flagship lounge, my boarding pass was scanned. I was given a black invitation card and told to head upstairs. Once inside, my invitation was taken and I was immediately offered some champagne. The lounge was absolutely massive. There was plenty of seating, dedicated Wi-Fi, outlets, quiet zones, an unlimited amount of food and soft drinks. They also had private showers, internal customer service desk, and an open bar that you could help yourself to. And there were plenty of of drinks. Well, that was an amazing experience. Definitely got to do it again sometime. Now, let's head to the gate to board my flight. They just call concierge, aka group one, aka first class, aka business class. All we need to board is our boarding pass and our passport. How you doing? Welcome, Mr. Scott. Thank you. Have a lovely flight. <laughs> I appreciate it. My first time flying business. Let's do it. And the time is finally here. This is going to be amazing. 7A? 7A, right here. Thank you, sir. Once on board, I walked straight into business class and I immediately knew this flight would be unlike any other I had taken before. I would be sitting in seat 7A, right next to the door to exit the plane. Once I sat down, I was offered water, apple juice, or orange juice. Above me, I had my own overhead storage, a pair of very comfortable headphones to use for the in-flight entertainment, eye level storage within an arm's reach, as well as two USB ports and two universal plugs, two personal air vents that you do not have to share right above you, a window directly behind me because my seat would be facing backwards on this flight so it didn't have much use. A normal adult sized pillow and blanket for the flight. I normally don't touch these at all when I fly economy because I heard they aren't ever washed. However, what the heck, we're in business class. Maybe they wash it every now and then. There's another small storage cubby down by my left side next to the seat belt. It had a water in it. I used the rest of the space for my portable charger. By the way, I'd also be flying next to a cute little furry friend. Her name is Cupcake. Make sure you say hi in the comments. There is also a very large tray table that is at least two or three times larger than what 
you would see in economy. Very useful. There's some kind of folder bin as well. However, I won't be using it because it does remind me of the storage in economy where people put their used tissue paper. To my left, we have all the controls for my business class seat. This nifty device here might look like a portable PlayStation console. However, it is everything but. The device controls the TV screen. However, it's touch screen as well. You just push the button and out it comes right for your viewing experience. You can change the language, watch movies, order food, track your flight, basically everything except play video games. What a wasted opportunity. This device here is for your seating controls. You can lean the seat back, you can make custom preferences, and of course, you can lean the seat all the way back into a bed. Let's be honest here, isn't this why everybody buys these seats? Next, we have the food and drink menu. I'll be honest, it's a little flimsy for a business class. However, there are a lot of options. Decent ones at that. We also got a goodie bag as well. Inside an eye mask, a pair of socks, toothbrush, lip balm, lotion, a pen made out of recycled materials for some reason, and of course, some earplugs. Now that we've gone over just about everything, time for takeoff. Once we were in the air, the top tier business class service would commence. And the first thing we would receive is a hot towel to clean off our hands. First, I would be given a peanut tray. I would then be told that I could have as much alcohol and soft drinks as I wanted. For the appetizer, I will be given a surprisingly large salad with feta cheese and chicken. For dinner, I would have Mexican chicken with rice and salsa, and I gotta admit, it was really good. For dessert, I had an ice cream sundae with as much and as many toppings as I wanted. After a quick trip to the business class restroom, which was the cleanest and largest I had ever seen, it was time to get some rest. Being 100% honest with you, if I had the money, I would never ever go back to economy again. The lie flat seats alone during a long haul international flight worth every single penny. In the morning after some rest, the flight attendant that looked like somebody's Aunt Petunia would serve us breakfast. We were served fruit, eggs, and sweet potatoes with a side of orange juice. Not bad. Just before landing, I would be given the ultimate parting gift to conclude my business class experience, an express pass to get me straight through customs without any hassle. Truth be told, I had no idea such things existed outside of global entry or a TSA type system. We did it. We've officially made it to Paris. Well, that was definitely an unforgettable and great experience. Now the fun part, a bus ride to immigration. Good thing we have this express ticket to get right on through immigration. And here's the bag. Well, I've officially made it to France. I am past security and man, what an experience. I've heard that Americans' business in first class wasn't all that great, but I guess maybe because it's my first time, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I definitely want to do it again. They say that once you go to first or business class, you never want to go back. However, I kind of have to, the way my bank account is set up. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit that like button on your way out. Subscribe if you haven't already. And know as usual, I love and appreciate every single one of you. I'll see you later. Take it easy.